This week, the PCC Cup Series rolls into Road America, one of the longest road courses on the schedule at about 4.2 miles. You might be wondering why we're not at Mossport this week. Well, right now there's a one kilometer thick glacier parked on top of it. Uh, some very strange climatic activity has occurred in the area around Mossport, and now it's buried under a glacier, so Road America stepped up and decided to host the race. Big surprise on the pole this week as Joe Craig qualifies on the pole. Surprised to see him up there and not his teammate Gaspar D'Souza. I think D'Souza actually started in the last row. Lenny Jacobs starts on his outside in the 52. And up front, we've also got Chester Benson. Big surprise there. He qualified fourth. And he's normally a short track guy, but all the top five people are usually fast on short tracks. But it looks like they decided to bring out all the stops and qualify up front. Edward Carroll in the back gets turned by Ian Elias into the wall and they go head on in turn one and that's going to put both of them out of the race. Ian Elias, your points leader, gets into Edward Carroll here as he gets out of shape. It's in contact with Ike Durbin. He never lets off the gas as he takes both of them into the tire walls and out of the race on lap one, turn one. And here's AJ Murphy testing out the Acura for MRD Motorsports. He is running four wide there and he gets hooked by Pete Maverick into the outside wall. Gets a bit of damage there and Maverick comes spinning back on the racetrack. Everything looks like it's clear now, and uh, Murphy drives away. But oh, there's smoke up there. Looks like we've got another big fender bender. Let's take another look at that. Here's Ramsey Cockner as he gets turned by John Jefferson there in the Duncan, and he slides up into Bobby Dollar, and a bunch of other cars get involved. As you see here, we've got a shot, and Craig Willard slides back on the track, and he takes Claros here into the wall. Gavin DeGray also involved there in the 728. And it looks like we've got more chaos up here, as you see there. We've got, it looks like Barry Juvenal and Lewis Jones off. We're going to ride on board here with Claire Ossier. You see there, they get by the first incident, and Jefferson just dumps uh, Cockiner there. And then Woodard, I don't know what he was doing, but he swept back onto the racetrack and took a couple other cars with him into the wall. Not sure why he did that. And just huge calamity here in the first straight. Looks like a bunch of cars are going to have quite a bit of damage. As you see here, that... It looks like uh, Kelly Blackwater just didn't break, or rather decided to use Barry Juvenile as a break there, and took out two pretty good cars. So not really sure why people were acting like boneheads in the first couple turns. Here is Lenny Jacobs. He is your leader right now. He's running way up in the front. Uh, we haven't seen him up here since Las Vegas Auto Ring, but past few weeks he's been having some trouble, as it looks like we've got Dan Lechleiter off in the back there. But Lenny Jacobs doing a great job up front. We don't normally see him up here. So let's see what happened back here with Lechleiter and Craig Yonser. As, oh, it looks like Yonser just uh, pushed up into Lechleiter, and Lechleiter got into his rear quarter panel, took himself into the tires. But it looks like Lechleiter will continue on. He dominated last week at Carbondale. So uh, don't doesn't look like we're going to get a repeat performance of that. And here's Lenny Jacobs trying to hold off Sam Brown. Brown, I think, is a bit more experience on the road courses than Jacobs. Jacobs filled in last year for Brian Gallagher on uh, after Gallagher was injured at Dwyer. And as you see here, Sam Brown pulls on the inside, giving his new sponsor Merrick Biotech a great run here. And uh, best run of the season by far for him as Sam Brown sweeps into the lead in that 71 car for Johnson Racing. Here in uh, battle for about fifth place, Chester Benson goes three wide with Barton Sandy and Greg Maddox. And Maddox goes into the sand Maddox having a great run here today, but uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to recover from that. Oh, yes, he does. He pulls back onto the track. Fighting spirit from that 78 car. This is only the second race of the year they've made. Sam Brown running up front. I mentioned before they had a new sponsor, Merrick Biotech. This uh, car will be, this sponsor will be rotating with his normal sponsor, Matco Tools, for the rest of the season. So hopefully he can give them a good run here today. One driver who's having an awesome run is Chester Benson here battling for fifth place with Cody Deke as Deke drives off the track a little bit. Chester Benson will hold on to the position as in the back there you see Clara Kendall going for a bit of uh, agricultural racing I guess. She had a, she's been fast in all the practice sessions but didn't exactly have the qualifying run to show for it as she runs three wide with David Hetzel there and Preston Bell as they're beating and banging there for I think that's about eighth position but good run for Chester Benson running in the top five on lap two. Here we've got David Hetzel running in eighth place, and he's been fast all through all the practice sessions as Clara Kindle went off there, as you saw before. But David Hetzel didn't have a good qualifying run, but he is catching the leaders by about a second a lap. 
and he's running in traffic, so you can only imagine how fast he's going to be when he gets into the open. David Hetzel here in his BMW, running great so far today. Claire Ossier hits the pit lane from about 30th place, and uh, not really surprised here considering she got pinched into the wall by a spinning Greg Woodard. See there, Ian Elias's car is trying to be serviced as well as Edward Carroll. And here we've got some shenanigans here on lap three as Richard DiMagaira slides wide and he gets hit by Dan Frey. They take each other into the tires as they enter turn one. Not really sure why they were doing that because, I mean, they are Lycoya teammates, but you see here it looks like MacGyver just gets a bit, uh, his car gets a bit squirrely there, and Ferre really has nowhere to go but straight into the side of him, and he'll take both of them out of the race. Here is Sam Brown still leading. He's got a big lead now on, I believe that is Lenny Jacobs in second place still, Joe Craig running in third place, but Sam Brown is looking to be an early title contender so far this year. Here's Ben Worthington battling with Cameron Taylor for about 30th place as he gets into the grass and he slides wide in the carousel getting into the marbles there and I think he might have saved it. Yes, he did save it. There's no damage on that car as you see AJ Murphy go sliding off there in the back. Let's go on board with him. New sponsor and new manufacturer this week in Kleenex and Acura testing for the rest of MRD Motorsports as he slams into the tires. I don't think Murphy has been much of a uh, road course specialist, but this is definitely going to hurt him as he'll have to retire from the race. He had just locked himself into the top 30 the week before. And here is John Kirkpatrick doing the exact same thing, although it looks like he hits it even harder. No surprise here considering he's been all over the place and pretty slow all week, although he did manage to qualify in 30th place. A respectable uh, improvement there. Here is the 11 car of Claire Ossier. Yes, she did indeed just pass John Kirkpatrick for position, as well as Pete Maverick. She's running in 33rd place right now, and she's got a long way to go uh, after making that green flag pit stop there, but she is flying right now. She is the third fastest car on track, so I think she might be able to make up quite a bit of position if she keeps at the pace she's going. Lenny Jacobs is running a distant second behind Sam Brown. As you see back here, we've got Joe Craig and David Hetzel battling for third place as Joe Craig goes off the track in the carousel. He drove that turn way too wide. Let's go on board with him here and see that he just slid off the track. He can't use the brakes, and he'll slam into the tire walls right there, and that will put Joe Craig out of the race from fourth place on lap four. Huge uh, mistake for him as here we've got Stringfellow Vincent going into the wall from ninth place. He got into Bart and Sandy, not sure if he was trying to react to Joe Craig being off in the turn there. And here is David Hetzel, he's challenging for second place and he makes it look easy getting by Lenny Jacobs there in the 52 car coming out of Canada corner. And now there is nothing standing between him and Sam Brown for the lead. He is absolutely flying. He's missed a few races this year, actually, at the 17 car, and I think he's trying to work his way back into the top 30 with this run. Half a lap later, he catches Sam Brown in the carousel, and he tries to make mincemeat of him, but I think Sam Brown might hold on to it here because we're coming into the kink, and there, Sam Brown will have more momentum on the outside as he holds off Dave Hetzel. However, I think it's only a matter of time before that 17 car gets by the 71. I think it might happen here in Canada Corner. No, Sam Brown throws the block. We've got excellent racing here for the lead as Dave Hetzel tries to make a move. He's gonna try and pull it off here. On the outside, he makes a move there. On the outside, coming into the final turn, but Sam Brown will hold on to the position, but Dave Hetzel has more horsepower coming up the hill, and Dave Hetzel will be your new leader here coming to lap five. Sam Brown did an excellent job there trying to hold on to the lead, but it was just too much for him to, to block, but David Hetzel definitely is deserving this good run after the terrible season he's had. John Jefferson, poor John Jefferson, he's been slow and all over the track. As you see here on lap five, he just drives off the track into the tire wall in the in the carousel, but he's he, he's going to continue on, albeit pretty heavily damaged. They're running the Duncan this week. And here is Chris Winter. He's battling for 15th place, and he slides into the sand in the final turn. He's having a good run today so far, but 
Uh, not to the caliber of what his teammate did last week at Carbondale. Lap 6, Brian Gallagher is doing battle with Gaspar D'Souza for the third position. I think D'Souza might be able to overtake him here in this turn. No, D'Souza runs wide, so Brian Gallagher will hold on to that position. Gallagher's not really known for being a road course ringer, but he is doing a very excellent job of holding off Gaspar D'Souza, who started way in the back. I think he started in the mid-30s and has worked his way up to fourth place by lap six. Props for D'Souza for doing that. Here is Chester Benson, who's been going the opposite way. He's down to 12th right now, and that is Robert Nelson in front of him, the Aussie. He is running in 11th place. Good run for him, as well as Greg Maddox in 13th, right behind him, although I think he's going to be overtaken here by Ike Durbin and Nicholas Corradovos for the 13th and 14th positions, but Chester Benson is falling back and fast. Here is Sam Brown getting ready to be passed here by Brian Gallagher for second position. He tries to make a block on Gallagher, but Gallagher pulls on the inside and he will make the pass here as we've got D'Souza and Clara Kendall who are both uh, flying around this track and D'Souza goes off in the final turn. However, uh, like everyone else, I think he might be able to get back on, but Brown is doing an excellent job trying to block them from getting by. He's trying to hold on to every position he can as the leaders are coming to lap. Poor, uh, poor Ben Worthington there. As you see, we've gotten on board of D'Souza. D'Souza was, uh, as I understand, a bit upset about getting pushed off the track by one of the slower cars, Sam Brown. Lenny Jacobs is running in seventh place on lap eight. He's reporting a problem with that car, and I believe I just saw a puff of smoke. Yes, we can confirm that there is definitely a problem on that 52 as he is slowing down. The miracle for Lenny Jacobs has gone up in smoke. He was contending for a top 10, and I think he might have actually been able to hold on for the rest of the race in that position, but he just stops the car right there, and the officials come out and push it off the track. Really tough break for him. He's had multiple mechanical demons here in the past couple weeks. Dave Hetzel holds a commanding lead over second place. I believe second place is still Brian Gallagher. As Yes, yes, Brian Gallagher is still in second place, but Dave Hetzel has just been absolutely thrashing the field so far here at Road America. This is the only car that's faster than him. Clara Kindle, or, well, Clara Crashall, as she's crashed in every race she's started in so far this season, I believe. So hopefully she can prevent that from happening here at Road America as she's got the fastest car on the track aside from maybe her teammate Claire Ossier who's been working her way up through the field from the back. Speaking of Claire Ossier, she is running on, uh, I believe she's in 24th right now. She worked her way past Lewis Jones and she's working her way up through the field despite all that damage on her car. Here's Ryan Jeffries and he is running in fifth place, an excellent run for him. He is not the most talented on road courses, although he nearly did win Dwyer last year, but that's more of a that's more of a speedway uh, than a road course, as he lets Gaspar D'Souza by, but he's been holding up D'Souza quite a bit there, as I think D'Souza gave him a one-finger salute as he went by. Not too surprised there, but Jeffries is just trying to hold on for every position. As you see there, he's holding up John Bracci, and uh, I don't think he's going to play too nice with them. He's definitely trying to hold everyone off, and I think he might give Jacob Eicholtz here a bit of uh, a bit of a trouble when he tries to get by. Oh, yeah, yeah, he definitely does there as he tries to work on the inside of Eicholtz, and he's not going to... He's not going to lay down and let Eichholz pass him for that position. Here we are on board Clara Kindall's roof camera as she makes her way up to start lap 11 here. Right there, she starts lap 11. You see that little tiny dot way in the distance? That is Dave Hetzel, and she is catching him by about anywhere between half a second and a second a lap. So I think she will catch him within the next five or six laps here. So we're going to keep an eye on this battle and tell you a more about as it unfolds. Here is Ryan Jeffries doing another block on Jacob Eichholz as Nicholas Cordovos decides, uh, I'm going to pass you now and see if I can do something about this. The two Griffith Motorsports cars are running up in the top 10 at this point, with Jacob Eichholz doing an excellent job showing why he should be subbing in that car. He did an excellent job last week at Carbondale as well, but fell out with a suspension failure late in the going. 
here is Ryan Jeffries holding up Nicholas Corradovos as he's leaning on Corradovos' fender there. So Corradovos just decides, oh, I'm going to let you go by. Ryan Jeffries doing an excellent job trying to hold on to whatever position he can. Uh, and he's not afraid to race dirty around the road course ringers. As you see there, Jacob Eichholz runs the turn wide. He's having a lot of trouble trying to get by Jeffries. So he slots in behind his teammate, and Jeffries holds on to the position here. And here is Ben Worthington, and Lewis Jones, I think, is tired of seeing him in front of him, so he dumps him into the wall right before the carousel. Ben Worthington, I believe, would retire after that. Uh, I'm not too sure about that, but that car has been heavily damaged. I mentioned before that Jeffries was blocking everyone. You see here that the Griffith Motorsports teammates got by him. And now he's deciding, oh, I'm going to cut across the entire track and block Greg Maddox for this position. Uh, this trivial position of, I believe, that's 11th or 12th at this point. So he is falling backwards, but he's doing one hell of a job trying to block everybody behind him and slow them up. So I don't think the competition's too happy, but uh, on the other hand, he is being an exemplary blocker. And now it's time for your lap-by-lap -lap Clara C report, as she currently is passing uh, Preston Bell and Gavin DeGray for the 19th position. Here we have Chester Benson right in front of her. And I think Benson might try and throw a block entering Canada Corner. I don't think that's the wisest thing he could do, as yes, he tries to move over and make a block, but he thinks better of it. Good judgment by him as Claire Ossier slides by and takes the 18th position. Ike Durbin, Stringfellow Vincent, and Ryan Jeffries, that blocker, uh, he moves over on Stringfellow Vincent, and that pushes Ike Durbin into the sand, and quite frankly, I think that's ridiculous that Ryan Jeffries is still blocking despite falling way through the field, and Ike Durbin, I believe, uh, radioed to his crew to get ready to go over to the 91's uh, pit crew and uh, start a brawl or something like that. Uh, something along those lines, maybe. But here is Dave Hetzel, and he's losing quite a bit of time to put uh, Clara Kindall. As you see, Clara Kindall is on the same straightaway as him, and he's losing quite a bit of time. He's coming into the pits in the next two laps. He has reported over the radio. Speaking of pit stops, here is Gavin DeGray and Chester Benson kicking off green flag pit stops on lap 16, and they've kind of been running in the back, having been getting the best fuel economy. Clara Kindall has nearly caught Dave Hetzel here on lap 16. They're coming to uh, lap 17 now, and I believe she might catch him in the next lap or so if they're not pulling into the pits, but no, they are pulling into the pits. Dave Hetzel leads Kindall into the pits. I believe this, yes, this is a scheduled stop, and Clara Kindall will pull within about five car lengths or so on Dave Hetzel, as Brian Gallagher and the rest of the field also follow them into the pits. You see here, one car didn't pit. One car, which is Jacob Eichholz. The 49 car of Jacob Eichholz does not pit, and he will inherit the lead over over Dave Hetzel and Clara Kindall. So good job for him. He's going to stay out and try and get a bonus point by leading this lap. Another driver that rolled the dice and tried to get back into the lead is Stringfellow Vincent, and he is currently running fourth place, just a little bit behind Dave Hetzel and Clara Kindall, for they are running in the second position. Clara Kindall has caught Dave Hetzel here, coming out of Canada Corner. She makes a move on the inside in that S right there, and it looks like Hetzel's car is a bit loose. She makes a move on the outside, and Dave Hetzel pulls the block. He's trying to pull the block again, and Clara Kindall makes contact with Dave Hetzel, and she turns him into the tire wall. Dave Hetzel into the tire wall from what would have been the lead. As you see here, his car is absolutely crippled as Clara Kendall drives away and just absolutely dumped the 17 car, but he was just blocking all over the place. Let's get another replay of this from another camera. You see there, he makes a move over and gets turned into the tire wall, and his race will be done. Here's a view from Clara Kindle's on board as, yep, right there. You see right there that Dave Hetzel moved to the right, trying to make an aggressive block, but it did not stick, and Clara Kindle is the beneficiary. Here is Clara Sear, and she has moved her way up into third place because of that. Now, Clara Sear, who got wrecked on the start by Greg Woodard, is uh, in contention for a podium with Brian Gallagher right behind her and Gaspar D'Souza running in fifth place. 
but Claire Asir is going to hit the pit lane the next lap because she is off cycle because she came in on lap three. So Claire Asir is on a different pit strategy than everybody else. Hopefully it'll work out for her. We're back up front with Clara Kindle as she's coming to put a lap on Dave Hetzel. And Hetzel, I believe he just gave her a one finger salute right there. Understandably so because he was furious about getting dumped for what would have been the lead and possibly the win. However, Clara Kindle's car was a bit faster than his and no matter what happened, I think he probably would have gotten uh, passed for that position anyways. Michael Grant is currently running in the top 10. He is subbing for the injured Josh Marshall in this car. And up front there you see there is Chris Winter as well as I believe that is Cameron Taylor. Those two, Cameron Taylor and his teammate Greg Max, those cars look so similar. But good job for Michael Grant subbing here in his uh, in his niche road courses. He didn't exactly have a fair shot last week at Carbondale. Here is Brian Gallagher who is running in second place right now in front of Gaspar D'Souza and John Bracci. Both of those cars are having an excellent run. Uh, all, actually, all three of these cars are having an excellent run, and Brian Gallagher is punching way above his weight. We did not expect to see him running up in podium contention in this car. He is... Uh, we have we kind of writ, wrote him off at the beginning of the season as being nothing more than a midfield driver, but he's proving us wrong here by running up in second place and holding off Two of the best road course racers in the race right now, John Bracci and Gaspar D'Souza. Brian Gallagher still having one hell of a run, exiting Canada Corner here on lap 21, as John Bracci makes a move on the inside because Gallagher slipped up there a bit, and Gallagher will slot his place in third as John Bracci holds on to second place. A great run for the Italian driver driving for Australian Motorsports as Gaspar D'Souza runs fourth and Nicholas Corridovos has decided to join the fun. He's running in fifth place and he is the fastest car on the racetrack in that number 39 Katzen. He has been catching these drivers because they've been having one hell of a battle. As you see here, Gallagher has fallen back a bit. I think he used up his equipment as Corridovos makes a move on the inside coming out of Canada Corner. That's one of the excellent passing places here at Road America and he will complete the pass coming into the final turn. And Nicholas Cordovos will move into podium contention as he holds on to third as John Bracci is in second place. Michael Grant hits the pit lane. He is running in 10th place. Tough break for him. He is reporting a puncture on that car. Here's Chris Benson driving in about 25th position. The, ten the entire Tenere team has been uh, horrendously underdeveloped, I should say, on the road courses. And uh, I believe Benson is the least experienced of the drivers on the road courses for that team. So he's just kind of putzing around trying to gain experience here in the back. Here on lap 23, John Bracci's gotten a bit held up by the lap car of Ramsey Cockner. And here, Nicholas Cordovos, I believe he's going to make a move on the front straightaway. Uh, Ramsey Cockner slides to the left, and Nicholas Cordovos slides to the right as he makes a move on John Bracci for the second position, coming into the long straight up the hill. And I believe he will complete the pass here on the long straightaway, yes. Uh, Nicholas Cordovos will move into second place as you see that Ramsey Cockner held up John Bracci right there. Here is Robert Nelson. He's running in 13th on lap 25. He's having a pretty decent run up here in the top 15. He's been struggling the past few weeks. He hasn't really adapted to a lot of the ovals. He is much more of a road course racer, but he's definitely punching a bit above his weight here on the road courses. Here is Nicholas Cordoz, and there is nothing standing between him and Clara Kindle right now. As I mentioned before, he is the fastest car on the track. Speaking of Clara Kindle, here she is. Uh, getting ready to put poor John Jefferson a, a third lap down now here on lap uh, 25 I believe and uh, I think the officials want to have a word with her about that little maneuver on uh, David Hetzel for the lead because we don't really take too kindly to that here in the PCC Cup Series. Here is Osir uh, making a pass on Ike Durbin for 10th uh, position. Yes, that is 10th position and Claire Ossier is absolutely flying, as I said before, she is the third fastest car on the track now, behind the 39 and the 14 car, and she just made a pass on Ike Durbin, she is now running in the top 10. Here is Barton Sandy having a decent run in the top 20, he qualified in 5th position, and he's slowly been falling back, but he is 
definitely holding on to that position. And he's having a pretty decent run. We haven't talked too much about him all season in the Holden, but he is doing a pretty decent job here at Road America today. Chris Winter and Cameron Taylor hit the pit lane with just six laps to go here on lap 26. Not really sure if they had a problem or if they were just uh, running low on fuel. And here is Chris Benson doing a bit of blocking on Clara Kindall for some reason. Not really sure why he wants to block her so badly, uh, considering she's the leader and kind of running away with this thing. And here is Chris Winter. He drives Canada Corner a bit wide. Clara Kindall makes a move on the inside. She makes contact, and they take each other into the tire wall with just five laps to go. Clara Kindall will retire from the race. Clara Kindall, I don't know why she made that move, made it over-exuberant, ballsy move to the inside, but she takes herself and Benson into the tire wall and both out of the race. So Nicholas Corradovos now will inherit basically inherit the win unless something happens to him and knowing how this race has been so far I wouldn't put that past the field so we've got Gaspar D'Souza in second place and John Bracci running in third at the moment as I as we look at that battle right now as John Bracci makes a move past Gaspar D'Souza I think they're battling knowing that oh maybe maybe Cordovas will have a problem considering uh, two of the past leaders have as Greg Maddox, if you saw back there, he made it up to fourth place. Here is Jacob Eichholz trying to hold off Claire Ossier, who's been on a rampage this entire race. She's trying to get by him for sixth place as he runs her a bit wide there. But I think she's going to complete the pass fairly easily. Yes, she does. In the final turn, with just a couple laps to go here, she makes the pass on Jacob Eichholz. Running here in uh, for about 12th and 13th, coming to three to go. We've got Robert Nelson and Chris Winter, and Nelson runs the turn wide, and he goes into the... Oh, my. That was a huge wreck. Nelson just flew about 15 feet into the air by getting turned by Chris Benson into the tire walls. Let's watch here from uh, Sam Brown as he goes flying into the air. Not really sure if he's okay. I think he's all right, considering he got out of the car under his own power. Let's watch here in slow motion as Chris Winter hooks Robert Nelson, and I guess the tires threw his car into the air like that. I've never seen anything like that before, and he just gets a ton of air. Sam Brown is really lucky there, but Stringfellow Vincent gets a piece, and Cameron Taylor does as well, but Cameron Taylor just scoots by with not too much damage, but that'll take Stringfellow Vincent out of the race here with just a couple laps to go. Nobody could touch Nicholas Corradovos, however, and he takes the win in... Uh, not so dominant fashion, he just kind of walked right into that one, if you ask me. Our cameras missed Greg Maddox making an awesome drive past John Bracci and Gaspar D'Souza in the last couple laps to take second. Props to him, this is only his second star of the season. John Bracci held on to third place, Gaspar D'Souza fourth. Those two were having a hell of a run there in the last ten laps. Brian Gallagher punching way above his weight. He finished in fifth place. Claire Ossier, what a drive from her. She finished sixth. Jacob Eichholz showing why he should be in that 49 car. He finishes seventh. Ike Durbin, great run for him. He finishes in eighth. Cameron Taylor and Sam Brown, the early uh, the early leader in that 71 car, gives Merrick Biotech his new sponsor a good run there in the top 10. Props to him for doing a great job in a, a situation he's not too familiar with, leading at a road course.